Finding the derivatives of these arc hyperbolic functions always follows the same pattern. So let's do it for the arc shine. So we'll write y as the arc shine of t. That would mean that the shine of y is t. If we take the derivative of both sides with respect to t, the derivative of the shine is the cosine. So we get the derivative of the outside of i with the inside times the derivative of the inside. And the derivative of t with respect to t is 1. So dy dt is 1 over the hyperbolic cosine of y. There's a relationship, though, between the, the shine and the cosine. See, so cosine squared, I should write it this way, cosine squared of y minus shine squared of y is 1, which means that the cosine squared of y is 1 plus the shine squared of y. So the cosine of y could be either plus or minus the square root of 1 plus the shine squared. Now we choose whether it's plus or minus based on um, whether the y value is a place where the cosine should be positive or negative. But if you remember the graph of the cosine, the cosine is e to the y plus e to the minus y all over 2 e to the y is positive, e to the minus y is positive, the sum of two positive numbers is positive. Take a positive number and divide by 2, and it's got to be positive. So the cosine is always greater than 0. So we know that we don't have to consider this negative one, right? The cosine is never negative. So if we go back up here, then, we have 1 over the cosine of y, but that would be the square root of 1 plus the shine squared of y. And we know that the shine of y is t. Huh? So the shine squared would be t squared. We get 1 over the square root of 1 plus t squared. Now, where this would be important would be if you were trying to integrate and you got 1, the square root of 1 plus t squared, you say to yourself, wow, if only that was 1 minus t, minus t squared, then I know that would be an arc sign. It's off by a sign. Is there anything I can do? And that's when, um, hopefully having seen this, you'll get a little tickle in your brain that will say, oh, I'll go look up the chapter on hyperbolics because the arc hyperbolics are a lot like the arc trig functions. So then you'll look it up in the table and you see, oh yeah, the answer is the arc shine of t. So that's our purpose in doing this, is noticing that the arc hyperbolics give us some nice, easy antiderivatives for some problems that we couldn't quite handle with the arc trig functions. Let's do the arc cosine. So um, before we do that, we should think about this problem with the arc cosine. Arc cosine is always positive. In fact, because it's e to the t plus e to the minus t over 2, um, the cosine it's always positive, and it grows exponentially both ways. As t grows, the e to the minus t fades, and you get a function that approaches e to the t plus 2. And as t goes to negative infinity, this term fades, and this um, sort of grows backwards like e to the negative t over 2. So cosine wouldn't naturally have an inverse because it fails the horizontal line test. The way to give it an inverse would be to cut off one side, and probably be most natural to cut off the negative side, since negative numbers are kind of a pain anyway. So when we talk about the cosine inverse of t, we're talking about just this function. It's what you get when you take the right-hand side, or the right branch of, of cosine, and you, you uh, find the inverse. So you flip the x and y axes. So for the cosine inverse to even exist, we need t to be greater than 1. That's because the outputs from the cosine are um, always positive, right? And we can see that the output of the cosine inverse is always going to be a number that's bigger than 0. You can see t could actually be equal to 1, so t greater than or equal to 1. All right, well, let's, uh, let's take this derivative. We'll use our same trick. y is the cosine inverse of t, so the cosine of y is t. And you take the derivative, the derivative of the shine, uh, the cosine is the shine, so the derivative of the uh, outside of i with the inside times the derivative of the inside. The derivative of t with respect to t is 1, so dy dt equals 1 over hyperbolic shine of y. And use our identity again. So the cosine squared of y 
minus the shine squared of y is 1. We have shine of y. We want to relate it back to cosine y because we know the cosine of y is t. That's nice and simple. So if we start solving for shine, I'm going to add shine squared y to both sides and subtract 1 from both sides. That'll give me shine squared y alone on one side and cosine squared y minus 1 over on the other side. So the shine of y should be equal to plus or minus the square root of cosine squared y minus 1. But here's the thing. If y is the, the cosine inverse of, of t, then y is automatically positive. So we know that y is greater than 0. If you look at the graph of the hyperbolic sine, it grows exponentially this way. It goes to the origin and then uh, is negative and growing exponentially as we go backwards. So if we know that the value of y is greater than 0, which we do because the quotient inverse only gives us numbers that are positive by the way we defined it to have an inverse, the way we cut it off, then we know that the shine of y is positive, so we can ignore this negative sign. Okay, so if we have 1 over the shine y, then we know that's 1 over the square root of the quotient squared of y. But in our case, we know the quotient of y is t, so we have t squared minus 1. So, so we get um, another uh, derivative for for one of these hyperbolics. Now, this is handy. If, if someone asked you about this integral, so 1 over t squared minus 1 dt, well, you'd look at that and you'd say, oh wow, if it was only 1 minus t squared, that would be an arc sine or an arc cosine. Um, but it's t squared minus 1, it's the other way around. So um, that's when you should think, I wonder if that's a hyperbolic and go and look it up. And in fact, if you look it up, you'll see that that um, antiderivative is going to be the quotient inverse of t. Now, um, we have here the caution that t has to be greater than or equal to 1 because that's the way we defined the quotient inverse. It only works. We cut off this part, and oh, it, it only works if t is greater than or equal to 1 because the outputs of cosine have to be greater than or equal to 1. Okay, now let's see. In fact, um, 1 over the square root of uh, t squared minus 1 doesn't exist at 1, so I'll have to leave that off.